Well, hello, Shoreline Church. This is your devotional for Wednesday, December 22nd. That means two days from now, this Friday, is our Christmas Eve services at 2.30 and 4 o'clock. Please come and join us on campus, outdoors, or online. We would love to have you with us and invite people to join you online or on campus to worship Jesus. And then please remember that the following Sunday, that December 26th, it's all online from our homes to your home at 9 and 11 and on demand after that. And so don't show up on the campus on the 26th or you'll be here all alone. Enjoy the drive. It might be a lovely day, but we won't be here. Uh, we're going to dive into the book of James and just reflect today on, I think, a really, really important theme. I, I titled this little devotional, Am I the Judge, Jury, and Executioner? Because sometimes we act like we are. We see something that's wrong and we're going to be the judge. We're going to decide what's right and wrong and we're going to bring the punishment and you know, bring the hammer down. It's sad, but we can do it in overt ways or in subtle ways. And so in James 2, 10 through 13, we, we address this topic. In James 2, beginning of verse 10, whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking it all. For he who said, God, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. That is an intimidating line of scripture. Judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. And then the final part, mercy triumphs over judgment. It's a call to mercy. It's a call to grace. It's a call to the heart of God. Am I the judge, jury, and executioner? No, I'm not, and neither are you. Now, there is one who judges, and he judges with justice and righteousness, and he knows exactly what's going on more than I do and more than you do. So just a couple of thoughts. Uh, here, here's one thought from this passage. Guess what? You can't keep the whole law. You and I are not perfect. If we were going to be saved by our own righteousness, all we'd have to do is be perfect every moment of every day and every thought, every word, every action. We're not. And because we've broken the law, we are lawbreakers every one of us, and we stand condemned before a perfectly holy God. So then there's also a question, kind of, how, how are you going to live your life? And what this passage tells us is to make a decision, say, I will live, uh, you know, will I live under the law, or will I live under God's mercy and God's grace? We have to make a decision. Now, what the passage is saying to us is, live under grace. Because if you, if you live under law and you condemn others by the law, you'll end up being condemned. Because no one is righteous, no, not one, the scripture says, except for Jesus. And he paid the price for our sins. Here's another thought. Those who live as a judge of all people must be careful or they'll find themselves under judgment. If you or I live condemning, judging other people, we've got to be careful. Because that shows we aren't walking in the grace and the mercy of Jesus. Do we know his grace? Do we know his mercy? And if we do, we extend it. We don't live with judgment over everyone else. And then one last thought. Mercy wins over judgment. Mercy wins every time. And praise God that it does. Because if we were held up to the standard of the perfectness of the law, and, and, and we had to have perfect behavior to match the law, we would fall short. We have. But we stand before God justified because of what Jesus did on the cross, paying the price. He fulfilled the law for us and set us free. And so, do you live your life, do I live my life, like we are the judge or the jury and we're the executioner? If we do, we better get a hold of the grace of Jesus and let his grace get a hold of us. We better sh start showing mercy to others, knowing that that is part of the pathway of walking with Jesus. Then we'll experience in richer ways the mercy and the grace of Jesus. I hope to see you just two days from now at our, at our Christmas Eve services, 2.30 and 4 o'clock. I hope to see you online only on the 26th, and then back on campus January 2 for worship services at 9 o'clock and 11. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word that shows us our need. Thank you that you are perfectly holy and just, and we don't have to stand as the judge and the jury and the executioner because, God, you have the right to judge, and you do. And you've paid the price for all of our sins if we'll receive that grace. Let us walk in the grace of Jesus. Let us show mercy to others. And let us understand that Jesus, you have made a way for us. We walk in that every moment of every day and we share that grace with others. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, Merry Christmas and we'll see you on Christmas Eve.